how about how about that Shohei Otani? We love him. Can you believe this guy? Incredible baseball cartoon cartoon character. Yep. I mean, like Steve Nebraska from the film The Scout, made real. <laughs> but we're, are we pro or anti pitch clock, David? I've come around on it more or less. I don't know if it's like I think there would be a way to do it that would annoy people a little bit less. But that's like not the MLB way. Like if you like added two seconds to it, I think people would be less upset. But that's like. Rob Manfred's whole job is fighting for those two seconds, like the whole integrity of the game rests on it. Um, I mean, you I can know, give you I a funny the... answer. I've just been <laughs> thinking about it. The Mets are terrible, man. I have to be like paying attention to how long the games are. The rest of the uh, shit is offering me nothing uh, at all. Uh, Scherzer to the Rangers. Welcome to. We're talking baseball with David yeah. Roth tonight. Felix is on vacation. Do not fear. We've got defectors. David Roth, and we're talking. Did Felix send you his list hour. of top fifty guys to move at the deadline? Because I, I have mine, <laughs> and I know I've seen Matt's. Uh, he he just said, um, um, uh, "Poor uh, a white phosphorus on Wrigley Field." That was that was his <laughs> baseball thoughts. But yeah, we got got David Roth in the house today. Maybe we'll talk some baseball. But okay, we got it. We got the, for the first thing I need to talk about on today's show. This was a news story that broke. Like five minutes after we stopped recording, very frustrating, and it's just so so annoying. So I will just I will just introduce this clip by saying, "Halt, citizen! Sugar has been detected in your trees." <laughs> Cue up the clip. Roll it. Yeah, oh, what is that? An icy? Yeah, that's probably a lot of sugar, huh? Four <laughs> H, <laughs> Wayne County. <laughs> I just. Probably I just, a lot I mean, of like, sugar I, in that, huh? That's okay. I mean, you know, rot your teeth. Have diabetes. Go for it. The voice is not altered in any way. You didn't run it through the holding your <laughs> nope. nose like a child filter. <laughs> he can't. He cannot I, help it. He sees sugar and he just starts hissing like a reptile. <laughs> That's like the opposite. It's like formally the same as Trump getting on the phone with that kid and being like, do you believe in the Easter Bunny? Probably not, right? You're a little old for that shit. It's but a the vibe argument. is diametrically opposite, but the content is somehow the same. I'm just like, I, I'm, I, you know, Felix is on vacation and it's too bad that he can't he can't uh, claim the glory or rather uh, blaze his own glory. Thank you, Oof. X.com. I, I really wish Felix would be here to blaze the glory of Ron DeSantis's continued sugar bungles i mean <laughs> this guy i mean i just like i i thought felix saying like felix pointing like just just crystallizing ron DeSantis with the it's sugar man moment that nothing was going to top that <laughs> but walking around iowa um wearing a like a fucking sleeveless zip up when it's 98 degrees outside yeah. and then like the, the only thing his brain can like think of to spit out to some kid with like i don't know like a, a slushy or ice cream or whatever is saying there's a lot of sugar in that. Yeah. yeah, just doing Billy Eichner shit where he chastises people for whatever they're eating. <laughs> like going into a Wendy's and being like, you don't need a large fries. Look at yourself. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, the, there's oh, a man. photo of him in a yep. like truck stop or like whatever convenience store the type thing station, where he's standing. Yeah. And it's basically, again, like sort of similar to that photo of Hillary where she's like in a normal person's house and <laughs> looking looks stunned. like she's seeing the fucking like slideshow from Manhunter. <laughs> 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 this is a sink. Do you see? <laughs> right. This is a refrigerator. <laughs> After it's becoming, do you see? <laughs> <laughs> no, but but David, in, in the Ron DeSantis one, he's like, he's bent at a perfectly 90 degree angle surveying all of the gas station food and then like the, the journalist or whatever was just like ron surveyed the items at the gas station he purchased a quest bar a quest bar a quest a bar, quest bar. Quest? think what about how that? long that quest bar had been sitting in that gas station like that arrived there like at least when obama was president possibly earlier and he was like well this seems to be the healthiest option uh, Quest bars are sort of like a high protein energy bar that's like yeah. that, that has the appearance of candy. It has chocolate flavor, but certainly no sugar. Certainly no sugar. sugar. Can't have any of that. Can't. If you want, he has put lead. himself at a dietary distance, man. He is doing it. I'm glad that you pointed out the posture, though, because that guy's rewired his whole like physiognomy and way of presenting himself to the world to emulate Trump, and it's going to get him beaten by Tim Scott in two primaries, <laughs> and then he's just going to have to go back to his job. Like well, all of I that, mean, you do the accordion hands now. He can't stop doing that. Like that's just it's in his brain. That's not an opt out. And he's stuck with it. You said like he's trying to he's trying to imitate Trump, or now he's trying to distance himself from Trump. And like nothing is working for this guy. This comes on the heels of New York Times out today with a headline: 
Trump crushing DeSantis and GOP rivals time Siena poll finds. And like the whole poll just breaks down like the different tranches of Republican support. And Donald Trump has more support among Republicans who think that um who think that compelling Bud Light to um, attack trans people is the most important issue of the day <laughs> and people who think that that's not an important issue and people just just shut the fuck up about it. And it's like the same margins, right? Yeah. Like it's basically like Republicans that think that trans people are real and OK. And then Republicans that think that trans people are demons on this earth both agree by like 36 points that Ron DeSantis <laughs> is unsettling and they don't want to vote for him. <laughs> well, like uh, here are some here are some polls from the New York Times article. Mr. DeSantis narrowly edged Mr. Trump as be, on being seen as likable and moral. Interestingly, the share of Republicans who said Mr. Trump was more fun than Mr. DeSantis, fifty four percent to sixteen percent, almost perfectly mirrored the overall horse race. Yep. On a range of issues, the poll suggests it will be difficult for Mr. DeSantis to break through against Mr. Trump on policy arguments alone. In the head-to-head matchup, Mr. Trump was far ahead of Mr. DeSantis among Republicans who accept trans- transgender people as the gender they identify with, and among those who do not. Among those who want to fight corporations that promote woke left ideology, and among those who prefer to stay out of what businesses do, among those who want to send more military and economic aid to Ukraine, and among those who do not. <laughs> among those who want to keep Social Security and Medicare benefits as they are, and among those who want to take steps to reduce the budget deficit. It's just, there is no policy here that would placate any of these people. It's not about policy. It's, it's, there's, no one wants any policy. Yeah, policy means nothing. I mean, there was, a, there was a thought I had that maybe the vaccine could be a wedge, but no, everyone has agreed that they just don't want to, they want to pretend that never happened, that they yep. just want to move on and like, only the real freaks want to keep talking about COVID in any respect, in any respect. So that's not useful. So in every other thing, it's like he's basically got the same policies as Trump. He's arguing he can do them better. But yeah, who really cares about that? He looks like a freaking creep that nobody likes. That's what really matters. There's a great bit at the end of that story where they're they're pull. I, this is the first time I've ever seen this. I'm not like a habitual reader of polls, but I feel like I would have heard about it before where they asked which candidate was more fun or the most fun. Like they used that word. And in the times, I don't remember the exact wording. They're basically like it was 56 to 53 to 17 uh, Trump over DeSantis for most fun. And they were like, interestingly, this mirrors the spread in the broader electorate in the Republican Party, that it is basically one to one with their preferences. So it's like, I think beyond the fact that it's stupid to try to win a Republican primary uh, like on policy, like just as much as it's stupid to try to win one in a Democratic primary, it's just also like, you know, the wish casting is a little bit grosser, I guess, where the GOP is concerned. There's also it's like basically they're asking, do you want to recast the role of like the hero of the cable news show that you watch? (laughs) Like, do you want to like recast the Mel Gibson part in Lethal Weapon with Kirk Cameron. Are you into that? And the answer is no. Like, nobody wants to do that shit. There's a... I mean, like, uh, this this Times article had one of the best um, poll quotes from one of the people that they polled I've ever seen in one of these articles. Uh, This is a GOP voter here. He might say mean things and make all the men cry because all the men are wearing your wife's underpants and you can't be a man anymore. (laughs) David Green, 69, a retail manager in Summersworth, New Hampshire, said of Mr. Trump, you've got to be a little sissy and cry about everything. But at the end of the day, you want results. Donald Trump's my guy. He proved it on a national level. They're out there crying. They're wearing diapers. They got a big lollipop. (laughs) They got a propeller beanie. The thing that I'm I'm stuck on is where he goes, they're crying. They're wearing your wife's panties. (laughs) (laughs) Wouldn't Wouldn't it be their wives' panties? Or is like the implication these guys are breaking into your house? No, they came into your your wife's bedroom and stole her her ladies' garments. Yeah. Not and like, stealing the panties, James Elroy style. <laughs> it's <laughs> hard to read the things. first bit of that quote in anything but the like Mo Sizlak, I have a big butt and it's a smelly butt and I like to kiss my <laughs> own butt cadence. Like it's clear that this guy had been waiting for a really long time to get the opportunity to just get some fucking bars off about libs. And he blew it. He got too excited. He said a bunch of stuff yep. that didn't make any sense. Yep. <laughs> Where are the, your wife's panties? Right? And I, hold on. Are, are you recording yet? Because I wanted to do a panties bit, but I think I said that I used the wrong, because I said your wife. Wait, yeah. Not your, of course not your wife. All right. Count, me, count myself back down. Three, two, <laughs> one. They love to wear my wife's panties. Shit. <laughs> not shit. Come on. 
um, I mean, this, this, this is it a- goes to show why they're not going to go from Trump because like a guy like this, he's clearly got things going on, Yes, <laughs> but he does not want to examine them. He just wants to have fun with them. Yeah. And like the whole DeSantis deal is, no, we're going to like get uh, we're going to get quantum on all of these policies and we're going to like tease out all the pathologies underlying them. Nobody wants that. Nobody yeah, wants to overturn care. those rocks. Sorry. They want the big guy to be like, we're going to take care of it. We're going to look into it strongly. Yep. That's all they want. And then they want to like get mad at the people that are keeping him from looking into it strongly enough and hitting yeah. the like two week timetable that he quoted them. The idea well, like that's the part that's funny about the quote to me beyond the obviously the panties bit is very good. I got to hand it to David Green, 69 of New Hampshire. <laughs> There's all when he has to like hit the emergency break and do the 180 to be like, oh, but at the end of the day, it's about results. Right. And it's about America. It's like, I don't know, dude. Like, you seem way more, Hold on a minute. <laughs> you seem way more excited about who's wearing whose panties than about the other stuff. So, well, I mean, like uh, David, to me, like uh, the, the most amazing thing at the end of that quote was uh, when he said, like, you know, uh, we it's, at the end of the day, it's about results, and he's proved it on a national level. And I'm like, what? Like, what? Yeah. What did he do really? that you approve of? Like, what? What's the thing that he delivered? I mean, was it the tax cuts? Was it? The- he was entertaining every single day yes, for four it was years. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> he made yep. television fun to watch every single day. He was Those saying something results. that was funny, and you could, more importantly, imagine liberals getting mad at the thing he was saying. That the, who? <laughs> no one can give you what he gives you. Right. Certainly not the guy, the guy that's like, I'm going to give you all of the stuff that he talked about and none of the fun of watching him talk about it is like as crucial a misreading of what that electorate wants as anything that I could imagine. Yeah. Like that is a more dramatic misunderstanding and misapprehension of that base than talking about uh, universal health care to me. So someone noticed this the other day. I don't know if you guys follow this account. This guy, John Cardillo, who's like uh, a former Formerly a a a, a very uh, spicy uh, former New York City, so, so a former bad lieutenant with the NYPD, who was like <laughs> all in on Trump, Rudy, Bernard, Carrick, like he's their guys, and he's one of these guys that has like now come to realize that like he was like all about stop the steal. This is a fraudulent election, but you know the guy is a former cop, and when you see like recordings of someone in the box just confessing to. <laughs> <laughs> making shit up and lying in lawsuits and stuff. He's tweet, like he's he's jumped on the DeSantis train now and he's tweeting every day. And like uh, someone shared this the other day in our group chat and he was like, he lied to all of you and like stole. He took two hundred million dollars to stop the steal. that He's now using to pay his legal fees. And now all these patriots are rotting in jail because he lied to them. I just like all I could think about reading that tweet was like, God damn, Trump's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> like he got all those people locked up. He stole all their money, and is just fucking like spending it on his lawyers. Dude. Yeah, that's like the, the and like, real and they numbers too. They love him. They they yeah. fucking love him for it. I Ron think that's if you want to do the, the way. at the end of the day, it's about results. Thing. Trump took hundreds of realtors off the street. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like he encouraged them to take themselves off the street, but basically, like all of the most psychotic car dealership and real estate agent types in America, like they self selected. And then he got him locked up. Like that's more than I think, you know, Joe Biden would ever be able to say yeah. or even like follow through on. I mean, like, look, I I feel bad now because like this Ron DeSantis campaign goes much worse. So like we're gonna be really hard up for things to talk about over. Oh the God, next we're gonna year. get a Vivek news cycle. Like it's <laughs> gonna be very bad. I mean, they're 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 inflating the Tim Scott bubble right now. So, like, but buy now, but sell before the month before August is out. Yeah, yeah, no, because yeah. This, you don't want to go long on any of these guys. You got to day trade. Just yeah. get like there's there's a little bump. You just get in there, and then you get the fuck out because the long term prospects are dim. I do find it kind of charming that they still have like the idea of like there's this young bench of like talent coming like Democrats don't do that anymore. Like it's just like the oldest living member of the party gets to run for president (laughs) and that's the rule. But there's still there's like, I mean, obviously like Josh Hawley and stuff like knows better, but like him and like Tom Cotton, all those guys want to be president and they're all just as unsettling at the like visceral level as DeSantis is. Yeah. It's nothing but DeSantis. Yeah. I will, I will say they're all, yeah, they're all DeSantis. I will say this about Hallway and Tom Cotton. Like, they want to be president. Never going to happen for them. But at least they were smart enough not to run in 2024. Right? Yeah, this was the easiest IQ test possible. Do not run against Trump. Right. He is still the president, according to a majority of the primary voters. How do you run against the legitimate president? Yeah. 
even if you were good at politics, which I think yeah. we can now see that DeSantis mostly is not, there's one thing that everyone that you need to vote for you agrees upon, which is that this guy is cool and should be their dad. And how do you yeah. like, so if you're running against him, where do you fit in that argument? Like that's, I think part of, I mean, obviously a lot of it's just that retail wise DeSantis is, is trash and doesn't um, have the chops, but there's also this other <laughs> element where he kept trying to like get in these weird little needling sort of comments about, you know, like he has had some legal troubles, but of course I would let him fuck my wife. And it's just like, well, that's not, <laughs> like, you, both of those flopped. <laughs> like you have to pick one yeah. of those and stick with it. Well, no, I mean like the line to say this is going with now is he said that Trump wouldn't have, ha wouldn't have all these legal problems if he had drained the swamp. Yeah. <laughs> Which, so, like, so what do you mean by that? <laughs> I mean, and like as it's being interpreted by the press as like he's criticizing Trump for his legal troubles. It's like, no, he's criticizing Trump for like not executing Jack Smith when he had the chance. Right. Yeah. Like disbanding the DOJ when he had the chance or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but David, you talked about how like as we're seeing now, like it's just I don't know why this I mean, like the thing is like he barely won that race against Andrew Gillum, who was like on <laughs> off a of bean the whole fucking yes. race. <laughs> and he won it. Say. Most of his campaign stops were at truck stop bathrooms. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but but like, I, I, I guess he was like a considered a formidable or powerful or like a uh, popular figure in the state of Florida. But once again, like, this is just a Florida thing. What Florida is so weird and different from the rest it's of the, the freak country. State. Like, it's the least yep. normal state we have. Yeah. Yep. It is an, it is like, a giant humid insane asylum yeah. and nursing home combined. There's also and I feel like I'd be interested in what you think about this too well especially because I feel like as like tri-state area New York, New Jersey, Connecticut people, we yeah, have some responsibility for that cuz like Florida oh, yeah, has always absolutely. been the sort of like like when you use a garbage disposal, the slurry that is produced like drains into like central Florida's like, except for that's like guys. That's like retired yeah. police officers yeah. and like psychotic ex-administrators that just like go down there. And so that's, I think like it's hundreds of thousands of people. Like it's not unrealistic to say that like the part of the reason, I mean, obviously Florida has always been a freak state. Like it's, there's a lot of good it's books the about it and stuff. Thing. It's like the same reason he will never yeah. fucking, he, he was never going to work on a national level. It's because like the New York, the, the subspecies of New York tri-state area Cretan is just like the Florida guy. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they just, by they that. Just, I mean, it's like when you flush an alligator down the toilet, like you said, yeah, that's where the, the garbage disposal slurry ends up from the tri-state area. Yeah. Although you don't, although you can't have a garbage disposal in New York because of wokeness. Yeah, they don't because because yeah because the wokeism and stuff. Yeah, the, uh, but, uh, but, uh, I was reading Bernard Carrick's uh, Twitter feed the other day. Is that okay to say to just? Yes, absolutely. To, <laughs> you know, right. You're just trying to go to sleep. You know, <laughs> I was thinking about. I saw somebody talking about something he was talking about, and I have him like I did the auto block the people that that bought blue on Twitter or whatever. So I had to like go unblock Bernard Carrick. And then see how far back it was before he had posted about anything but that Jason Aldean song. And it was like, I didn't get to the bottom. <laughs> like, it was like four or five days of him. Also, Bernard Carrick, like the idea of like, try that in a small town is a really like. <laughs> try that in America's <laughs> biggest town. <laughs> try that in Staten Island. Like the, <laughs> this, whatever, the fucked up version of the large city that I've lived in for my entire life. But yeah, it, uh, it's nice to know that those guys, he is, he's stayed. Like that guy should by rights be like, um, you know, Orlando's problem at this point, but he's not. <laughs> I did just see that uh, Jason Aldean performed in Massachusetts yesterday. And he just, I mean, like he was, he continues to defend this try that in a small town song. By the way, if you guys listen to that song, I haven't heard anything about it. Like what? I haven't. Why is everyone so angry at this song? Because it's just sort of like, hey, if you try to loot a you try to loot a Walgreens here, we'll fucking kill you. It's 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 got lyrics about how, oh, you try to be mean to a police officer in a small town and we will execute you. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, it has right. that kind of. <laughs> it's like he flipped Randy Newman's rednecks, but like without the the perspective that was on the original. <laughs> and and well, and of course, you know, everyone is everyone loves playing detective now. So it, it was very quickly figured out that the uh, the set for this, the video which has got, got pulled off of CMT is, is a uh, small town, uh, Georgia town hall, which of course uh, had a lynching occur uh, in front of it. So everyone was like, this is a dog whistle, but I'm like, you're trying to find a town hall in a Southern town. 
what the odds are there was probably a, a lynching right. involved at some point. But anyway, yeah, that's why. Also, the idea of Jason Aldean masterminding that shit where he's like, they are just bringing him pictures of different courthouses and he's like, that's not racist yeah. enough. Like, I need something. <laughs> that, like- <laughs> well, I like, I mean, I'm going to get to my beef with Jason Aldean in a second, but I like his sort of like try that in a small town attitude, you know, where it's just like, this is what you're worried about. You saw 700 people get shot in front of you in like, Vegas. <laughs> like, I just, yeah. I, I like, I mean, where's, how about a little perspective about, write a song about that, buddy. But I got to say, if they had tried that in him. a small town, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, there in, wouldn't be enough like, people there. He's from um, Macon, too, which is, I think, actually a decently big city that it's also. It's got like 100,000 people in it. Yeah, yeah. John Rocker's from there. It's a great town. Yeah. Nobody's actually, none of the people who talk about this shit are actually from small towns. Right. It's, it's basically axiomatic at this point. Well, so anyway, like I, I didn't have a problem with him because of the song, but I have one now because he was performing in Massachusetts and he said to the, like the sort of message, the mass whole crowd, he was like, you guys can relate to my tri- to the message of this song. You know, it's like after the Boston bombing when you guys were Boston strong, everyone had <laughs> each other's backs. And I'm like, Boston strong again with this shit. What about New York, baby? How about you come here and fucking tell us? How about 9-11, buddy? That was I don't I mean, know they tried that in the to... biggest town and we came together and look, they haven't done it again since. They have not tried it since because they saw how New York strong we were. <laughs> Where would Jason Aldean perform? Did he play like Gillette Stadium or something like that? Uh, it was like I put some probably some place. It wasn't it was one of the Boston sports arenas, not Gillette okay. Stadium, though. Yeah, I would think that would be a good spot for him. That's a really uh, that's a very dark place that I've been there once it's at the end of a bunch of really uh, narrow roads that are constantly choked with traffic on a game day. And then it's surrounded by a frozen mall that when I was there had, um, Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting his name. The put a boot in your ass guy had like a restaurant for a while. Toby Keith had like Toby Keith's all American, uh, you know, Uh, grill in it. I've been, I was went to one of those like six months before they all closed. Because it was apparently just like a giant like Goodfellas scam where they were just using the front to just buy stuff and sell it or whatever. Yeah. They have a always, bar shaped like a guitar. I feel like you could just resell that. That there's probably a solid secondary market for like you can just send that to like whatever Kid Rock's place or something. Yeah, Jason Aldean, you it's time for you to get a, a rock and roll country bar and grill. Get going. Yeah. Put it someplace. juice this campaign up i need i need some i need something to talk about for the next 12 months and david you mentioned that like what we are seeing here is his true his true virtue as a retail campaigner just abysmal abysmal at you know glad handing um talking to people like did you see the clip of him laughing while holding a beer with those people and he's just like yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah and then like and then he's like, okay and then he turns away and you see him as he's turning away the camera's focused on his face the smile and like the joviality that he was trying to mimic just drops off his yep. face just drops off like a fucking ton of bricks just for a guy that vanishes has been touted as a real candidate he's had more like mask of sanity moments than anyone that i can think of <laughs> like there's just yeah, a you lot you don't want that no, you, you, you kind of that's kind of the whole job, really, of being a politician is to prevent those moments from occurring. Yeah. You don't want to just like be Greg Stilson thing. walking around with the baby in front of you. <laughs> yeah, he's had. I think this is where the like, I, I don't think that we're going to get maybe we get a Chris Christie news cycle. It does seem like a lot of the, the tri-state papers still like writing about the guy. But Christie has and this is not a compliment I want to make clear that he has, if you were like waiting for a drink at a wedding, like if you were like in a line at a bar at a wedding and he was somebody's in law, you could talk to him about like the jets for five minutes and it wouldn't be great, but you could do it. And I I think that he's the only person in the GOP field that you could like 
successfully be like, well, I don't know, like Rogers like has probably something left. And he'd be like, all right, kid, well, you know, maybe it seems like whereas like DeSantis would not do that. Like he would start talking about the blockchain or, you know, forehead shapes or whatever. Like you would you would you would, you would attempt to talk to, to Uncle Ron about like, oh, what do you what do you think the Jets this year? You know, they're going to. Maybe maybe a running back or two or something like that with a Deshaun Watson or something like that. And he'll just be like, wow, wow. Thanks for telling me that. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's great. Do you know Thanks if, for showing me that? Does Dal- is Dalvin Cook, does he eat a healthy diet? <laughs> <laughs> what are his macros? <laughs> uh, but like, so New York Magazine actually has, uh, has compiled, um, this is the headline here is all of Ron DeSantis' crimes against good et- etiquette by Margaret Hartman. <laughs> I don't know. We've covered enough of these uh, like individually, but I'd like to take them now holistically to just like, what's this guy's deal? Beginning with, of course, eating pudding with his hands. Yeah. Uh, per the Daily Beast, enshrined in DeSantis lore is an episode from four years ago during a private plane trip from Tallahassee to Washington D.C. in March of 2019. DeSantis enjoyed a chocolate pudding dessert by eating it with three of his fingers, according to two sources <sighs> familiar with the incident. I mean, DeSantis has denied denied this incident, denied the pudding incident. But I'm actually a little shocked that the nobody has picked up on, I mean, the unbelievable DeSantis lore dropped on this show that he took a flight to Israel and just sat there. No headphones, no, yeah. no movie, no book, no nothing. Just staring into the back of the seat in front of him. For just nine hours? Like he just like powered down? Yeah. Like C-3PO when he's <laughs> he went off. went in sleep mode. Yeah, that's just when Ron triggers energy saver mode, you know, the stump speech that happens between eight to 10 hours later is going to be fire. He's going to be his battery will be basically full. That is unsettling. I I know there's one about like there was something about uh, his wife. Is that in there where he would like go on dates with people and he would say a tie wrong? I feel like I've like, yeah, right. We all talked about that. Like he would say it wrong to see if they would correct him. Mispronounced. Yeah, 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 yeah. As Thailand. And if a if a woman corrected him, then he had to not see her again because that's not what a what a help meet is for. Someone who would literally not be employable in any job beyond one of the like most important powerful jobs in the country. Like that is not a guy that could like manage a uh, like a Quiznos. Like it no, would, there, that, would, there be would be an insurrection within a week. Yeah, they would run his ass through the fucking uh, the the toaster. The- Fucking pepper bar, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> drown him in the pepper bar. <laughs> it uh, the, it it does not just end with uh, eating pudding with his fingers. Apparently, he is a disgusting eater in general. While extreme, it seems the pudding incident wasn't totally out of character for DeSantis. A former staffer said he was known for devouring food during meetings. He would sit in meetings and eat in front of people. The former DeSantis staffer told the Daily Beast. Always like a starving animal who has never eaten before, getting <laughs> shit everywhere. Though a viral video of DeSantis saying, mmm, hungry, when presented with a burger <laughs> is fake, the fact that so many people found it plausible is not a good sign for his campaign. There's no way to come back from, I mean, even just the pudding thing. When you have to, like, issue a statement vis-a-vis the pudding claims, it's, you're done. It's over. Like, you can't be elected president if there's <laughs> some, even just, you know, a strong minority of people that think that you ate pudding You're like a raccoon. Pudding hand eater. Yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. three fingers. I don't know how many fingers is the right that's number like, to use. That's three a, seems to me to the worst. It's like I think three is the maximum amount of fingers you could fit in a pudding yes. cup to just scoop it into your mouth. Right. That's why. Like two is like, all right, well it's like a dainty little spoon. It's not great. <laughs> it's not a hundred percent what you want, but it's, it could be worse. But three is definitely just how can I get my whole hand? Can I get my whole face in here? No. Then you check down to. Three <laughs> I think the big problem with the, with the pudding thing is, is, uh, you know, rev- revelations of idiosyncratic personal habits uh, for a Republican can be good because then it gives yeah. Republicans a chance to uh, own the libs by copying them. Like all yes. those dipshits who went to the finest steakhouses in the DC area and ordered their steaks medium uh, with ketchup, fuck you. Yep. But you, no one wants to eat pudding with their fingers in public. <laughs> no one's going to feel like they're owning the libs doing that. They're only going to feel very, very, very strongly. Oh shit! I'm only owning myself here. That's actually the most I've wanted a DeSantis boomlet though. Was the idea of that of people like cutting <laughs> like "Are you offended?" Yeah, TikToks of themselves <laughs> yeah. doing that. 
just <laughs> like Cozy Shack has to formally disavow themselves from all of these guys. They're like, that is not our values at all. Like butterscotch is for everybody. <laughs> All the staffers he just fired were like one week away from uh, doing like a, a groiper pudding pudding protest on yeah. behalf of Ron. But they had, uh, unfortunately, we won't live to see that. Yeah, it's weird that a campaign featuring a bunch of fucking based Zoomer teens did not uh, connect more readily with the base of the oldest, meanest people in every state. I mean, that's the thing is like. The, these the, the young based people like they like to imagine themselves as being mean and ruthless, but they are nothing like the average 75 year old primary voter in New Hampshire right. like when it comes to hating other people and demanding things from them. Yeah, they're just they're confusing. I think that's the thing with the like and it's been kind of funny to see like the way that the discourse around the whatever the Nate Hotchman guy. But I mean, just in general, the way that those people get talked about where there's this tier of sort of like sinecure, like Rod Dreher type conservative intellectuals that clearly know all these guys and are also very familiar with all the Nazi symbology that all of these dudes are always getting busted for using. And yet like those people are also like in their day job, the ones that are hymning the like the common man and his wish just to be left alone or whatever. And then just looking at like, Wojak Sonnenrod gifts until morning and then just going back to work feels untenable to me. Like, I just don't know like how much longer that can be kept up. Well, there was, there was a great post this morning I saw from one of these guys who was just like, again, once again, commenting on like yet another leak of a private chat where someone was talking about putting Jews in ovens or something. Yep. And he was just like, I give the same advice at all like young <laughs> career counseling sessions to young conservatives. Like, just try to stay out of the group chats that are edgelord and you might end up saying some things that you really, you know, don't don't put anything in the email. You don't want your mom reading. But he was just like, I right. give this advice all the time. And you know what? I think it was that uh, Osita pointed this out. That's actually bad advice for young Republicans, because what you're yeah. saying basically is like you can't network. You right. Can't, that means you like, just you can't get anybody you're texting to trust with you. Mitt Romney. There's no one else for you to talk to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I believe that guy actually used like the, he was like, I tell people to stay out of chats where they use the N word. Like this is the sort of thing where like, <laughs> it's enough of an issue that, you know, if you're doing like a an informational interview for 30 minutes with like the whatever Vlad Dracul fellow of that at that year at the Claremont Institute. And he's like a couple questions about using the N word in conversations with my friends. And I'm like, oh, yeah, great. This is good. <laughs> Good thing I, I have a, I have a little sheet here prepared for this. I'll yeah, just I'll hand tell it you out. what I, I tell have to say anything. Everybody that asks me about using the <laughs> N word with their friends, I, I, I do. I do agree though. It's bad advice because how are you going to get uh, to network? How are you going to get anyone to trust you? Because yeah. like saying the N word in these in these chats is the equivalent of how like undercover cops have to do drugs in front of people yes, to show that right. they're they're cool. Yeah, you got to you, you got to snort that man, or else you can't come in. Yeah, if you're not based they probably think you're wearing a wire or something. Yeah. And of course they are because every single one of these people would sell out their fucking mothers at the drop of a hat. And invariably do. That's the part that I yes. love about it. It's like kind of a nice little uh, grace note to all of it is that, that movement of whatever, you know, there are like the 75 year olds are not FBI informants. Everybody younger than that, everybody that is not a base <laughs> Republican voter is an informant for the feds. Like they are informing on their homies nonstop. And I think it keeps them it keeps them on, uh, you know, on edge. It's good. It's like uh, kind of like what if you could just live the helicopter scene from Goodfellas for like 25 years? <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to New York Magazine, though. Uh, Ron DeSantis's crimes against etiquette um, extend further than just the bizarre his bizarre eating habits. Uh, listen to this. He didn't learn the names of his staffers. <laughs> Several key Trump allies and aides used to be close to DeSantis and are now fueled by their intense hatred of the governor, according to Rolling Stone. A source who flipped from Team DeSantis to Team Trump told the magazine, the nature of the conversations among people who used to work for Ron is just so frequently, okay, how can we destroy this guy? It's not at all at a level that is normal for people who hold usual grudges against horrible bosses. It's pure hatred that is much, much purer than that. People who are traveling with Ron every day, who worked with him very closely over the years to this day, joke about how it was always an open question whether Ron knew their names. And that's just the start of it. Is that really a departure, though? What, the question I have is, 
because it's 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 widely understood that that uh that Casey Casey DeSantis is sort of the the gray eminence of the campaign. She's she's the Lady Macbeth kind of pushing him forward, which means that she had to you know meet this guy and then think this is the horse that I'm going to ride yeah. to the White House. And what the hell did she see in him? That's <laughs> what I want to know. The Thailand test, yeah, Thailand test right, like, for oh. him, but like she was obviously also auditioning him to be a vessel for her ambition. What the hell was, cause I get why Hillary Clinton, like when she met young J- bill was like, okay, this guy's n- going to cheat on me every day of my life, but that's fine because he's a fucking molten wad of charisma, but he's going to the top. Yeah. People like watching him talk, right? Yeah. What you've got with DeSantis she, basically is some pretty good college baseball stats. And that's Yale's a D one program. <laughs> like he was, it's not nothing like he wasn't a draft prospect, <laughs> but it's the sort of thing he was. So basically, she was like, I met a version of like a, the small college version of Doug Mankiewicz and I can make him a leader or. Uh, yeah, get him she, I think that's it. I she want. thought she had something to work with. And it just no. like, nope, it's it's like she was assuming that there would be certain growth and it just never happened or it happened in the wrong way. It's like how Haley Joel Osment's head grew, but his face stayed the same size. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. I see it every time I look in the fucking mirror. <laughs> um, no, you are, you are I, I, Haley I think, Joel Osment if they was, got in there with the pro tools or whatever and, and put things where yep. they're supposed to be. Pinch and then see, Matt, pull out. to Yeah, pull out. With, with Casey, I think she was given the Thailand test, but like she, she instantly recognized it and thought, here, here is a grim Machiavellian Plato who is, you know, uh, <laughs> arranging chess pieces to ascend by, you know, uh, by by shit testing every potential date to just be like, are are they the type of woman who would uh, <laughs> be amused by a hilarious mispronunciation of a very commonly known name of a country? Or does she respect men enough to let me slide with yes. the most obvious malaprop, the most like just <laughs> yes, sixth most. grade doing a bit? Ma- <laughs> this is the part of it that's actually fun there, too, is that. It, so, yeah, she's obviously very ambitious. So is he. The fact that they're both stupid is what makes this sing. It's the idea of like him trying this dumb trick and then her observing it, thinking to herself, I see your game and being just <laughs> as dumb as him. Like yeah. meeting like, him goes, at that level and looking him straight in the eye. She goes, ah, Thailand. This gentleman will be getting into my Fabina later tonight. <laughs> uh, further Ron DeSantis crimes against etiquette. He failed to send get well wishes. A Florida Republican rep uh, told Politico that while Trump was the first person to call him after a January tree trimming incident landed him in the ICU, <laughs> to this day, I have not heard from Governor DeSantis. And you know what? Like th- This is separates the wheat from the chaff. This Trump obviously has nothing but contempt and hatred for every other human being on the planet. But he knows how to extend the glad hand. Yeah. yeah. He knows how to Can get you that personalized told- little, yeah. What he told every person he knows about this asshole getting hurt trimming their Christmas tree. (laughs) Like people he was just meeting for the first time. He'd be like, you know, do you you know Carl? Do you know what happened to him? And like just (laughs) gone off about what. But he knew enough to call the guy. That is, I think also Trump loves talking on the phone, which is probably something. Yeah, Santa. He's a kid, sir. Yeah. As a like to say this is basically the most elderly millennial you can be. Right. Yeah. He's like he's there. like basically he's right my age. age, Oregon Trail yeah. generation, right? Yep. So like that is like being on the phone to him is something that he's probably like grown out of disliking. Whereas I think that's oh, like God, just torture. Yeah, but Trump's got the one with like the a phone that has like the pigtail cord on it. He's on that like eight hours. <laughs> he's lying on his stomach, he, like, kicking out. his feet in the air. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A bye bye birdie style. Yeah, yep. <laughs> because he was of a generation when oh my God, I could just pick this up and talk to anyone. The world is at my fingertips, and not yeah. just like this device is a torture. A yeah. demon in my pocket <laughs> yeah. that torments me every day of my life. Right. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> He's still blown away by the fact that you don't have to talk to an operator and say, like, can I talk <laughs> to Sedgwick 700? Klondike 555. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, I know, uh, it's so nice. I get to talk without worrying that Midge is listening in. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, f- further, further Ron Crimes, uh, he failed to sign a sympathy letter. Florida Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna was endorsed by both Trump and DeSantis. But the New York Times reports that when her father died in a car accident in 2022, Trump sent her a condolence letter signed Donald. While the letter from the DeSantis campaign was only signed by the governor's wife, Casey. So there we go. Casey, you know, you know, 
ladies, you know, I mean, you got to take care of your husband better than yeah. that. You know, you got to got to get him to sign the card because everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows that it was just shoved in front of you and you're like, well, yeah, OK, so I'll sign this. Who's this? Whatever. But it's it's a thought that counts. I always thought that that was like mostly what being governor was, was like signing letters to people or like appearing at things and acting human esque for five minutes and then leaving. Like he made the this is where he fucked up. I think he actually tried to like do stuff that he was like working nonstop in the war room trying to shove it up Disney's ass when he should have been signing yeah. a letter to Anna Paulina Luna's mom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, he was, yeah, he, he was, uh, he was in a big, like a uh, big screening room and like all the pretty, there was cigars, uh, previewing the next, uh, three minute Prager U clip that will be the right. high school, Florida <laughs> historical curriculum for the next 20 years. We have the dailies from Kid Rock's next TikTok, <laughs> sir. Do you want to see those? <laughs> <laughs> He's got the little half glasses on just pouring over it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> laughing like De Niro in Cape Fear as he just helplessly machine guns a stack of Bud Lights. <laughs> uh, and finally, in addition to having a weird laugh and never saying thank you, uh, he had a recent cancer survivor fired. He says, this one isn't really an etiquette breach. It's just monstrous. Five former staffers told Politico at the beginning of his administration, DeSantis directed the Florida Republican Party leader to fire a party official who had cancer. On that person's first week back from surgery, Ooh. well, I don't know. I mean, we don't know. I mean, uh, maybe this maybe this person was an asshole. They are a Florida. Yeah, they, they were not <laughs> getting Republican the job party. done. Like, yeah, this is the always the thing with these stories. Beyond the fact that everybody's keen to fucking flip on each other all the time, at, at some point, I, think, I remember hearing you all talk about this. Where you're, you find yourself feeling sympathy for the people that have like Stephen Crowder's gopher. Like, I'm sorry he had to see Stephen Crowder's dick so many times. Like that <laughs> that sucks. I don't think he wanted that. But you don't have to. There's a lot of other jobs that you could do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You got to imagine that he's just like he sees the dick for the 400th time that day. And he's just like, oh, it's about the work. Remember? It's yeah. About right. What we put out every day. <laughs> yeah. Like you got you have to separate the artist from the art. The guy that's constantly like coming up, like just pitching in every podcast. I mean, he's being like, what if I did the Buffalo Bill dance from Silence of the Lambs? Would that be good <laughs> if I did that? <laughs> You think that we could like, do like a would you fuck me type bit for this? <laughs> like, you have to care about the podcast a lot to de deal with hearing that every day. Look, if I if I walk out this door today, they will not see him, uh, Stephen, dressed up uh, in a super girl outfit and trying to suck his own dick. And then where are we? <laughs> Look, it's about it's about China. They're trying to take over America, and that's why Stephen has to dress like Shanghai Lil. In a Busby Berkeley <laughs> style musical number. <laughs> All these guys being uh, thwarted like showbiz people, I know is not oh, a God. new observation. The fact that they're also like high school theater weirdos, like a lot of yes. them, that this is because yep. I know that was um that was uh, the dude, James, whatever, the okay, uh, Project yes. Veritas guy. Yes, he, 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 he spent like thousands of dollars on, on musical numbers yes. to record and put out to no one. Right. Like this is like this is what the donors want to see is just a full like it's it's the just the music man and I'm the lead yeah. in it. But if there's no twist. It's yeah. just the original score. I love the the musical. I think it's great. And that's what he did. Yeah. I think I don't and know. I mean, I guess in some ways I salute him. It's like when you hear about like the the other Koch brothers and they're like, he has like a realistic Western whorehouse on his ranch. You're like, <laughs> God bless yeah, that him. That could Have be fun. worse. Like he's not trying to. Definitely. Like, overturned gay marriage yeah, he's, not, he's not he's not he's not like a, 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 a lobbying to like a deregulate like can we pour a poison in an aquifer like yes no he just wants to be around card sharps and comely whores yeah, right if like, we are serious about de-radicalizing the right there would be some sort of uh pro program to just create a second broadway in branson missouri you know, not not the chintzy one that they have because they don't want that. That going yeah. there just makes them feel how exclusive they are. No, a, an exact lep replica of Broadway, the same beautiful the theaters, the same size. You you subsidize it so everyone that their every performance is packed, and then all these guys would just drop politics and just just zerg rush that place to finally live their dreams and yeah. leave the rest of us alone. I mean, I feel like even Trump would be inclined to do that. We, we must protect the future for the existence of our yes. great white way. Say, yeah. To say to Trump, hey, Trump, you could be in charge of, of Broadway, too. 
yeah. get the program the whole season of Broadway too. He could not turn that down. Yeah, that's, I think me, that's he the told other. Me, he told me he was doing a show called Phantom of the Opera, and I said, "Wow, <laughs> <laughs> wow." It's one of, that's one of my favorite Trump bits, too, because that story, I think that's what it would actually be like to talk to him. That, that story has no payoff. Like, it is basically yeah. like Andrew Lloyd Webber <laughs> called me one time. Can you yep. believe this? And the year yeah, he said he was going to do a show that he ended up doing. Yeah. No, I, so that was I, I was wait. probably one of the first, I don't know, hundred thousand people to know that he was doing cats. I guess that's a thing you want to brag about. You can do it. Like, I do think you're right, though, that it would have to be programming like you could offer Trump a Vegas residency and he would take it and he'd be glad to have it. But I think what he really wants is to be able to, like, book all the shows and audition chorus girls and do the yep. whole like be like Sammy is Rothstein having him on the on the scale, telling him, like, lose 10 pounds, yep. honey. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, I, I Matt, like we, we've sort of like, I don't know, groped this idea before, but like a comprehensive de-radicalization program would involve, yeah, like just letting these guys be actors and comedians. Mm -hmm. And then like yeah. having this weird, like um, sort of state backed, like success program where they can be like, yeah, like uh, you've sold out uh, this arena for your stand up comedy or like your movie's successful. But like just in this kind of totally parallel, sort of like a, like a, like a new deal, like public arts program, but for the yes. least talented people on the planet. Right. Yeah. Like a, a WPA for everyone that like works with Ben Shapiro where they just get to go and do whatever like the exact opposite of waiting for lefty is you get to produce that you get to write it <laughs> you can cast it like scott Bayo will do it like we'll pay his quote whatever that is he will play the lead in that it's a pretty solid a idea good, best, actually and the best part is is that because it would be all of course have to be subsidized it doesn't ever have to be transmitted anywhere like it can just be uh fully contained and they'll yep. all be happy in their little matrix bubble they say they don't want to be in the Matrix, but let let if they all got to be uh, Joe Pantoliano and I was got to be say, the actor gotta, that they want to be with the juicy steak, I don't think they'd mind. Yeah. Let them try the steak first. Maybe they'll like it. Yeah. Because he lived in the building at Trump Tower, he knew me a little bit. And he said, I'd love to have you as my guest. I'm opening up a musical called The Phantom of the Opera. And I said, oh, so let's go. So I say on the letter, okay, I'll go. And anyway, we went, and it opens with the chandelier. Or the, this, you've been there, right? Yes, you've seen yes, it. Yes, Do you agree? Shaksha. It's like, first time I saw it. Shaksha when the it, chandelier it, drops. It, no, the but whole, the whole thing. The whole thing. magnificent. It was a great, great musical. Like uh, only tangentially uh, connected, but I'm wondering: uh, Did you guys see um, RFK Jr. complaining about not getting uh, Secret Service protection uh, for his campaign? And like people may know to the tweet because it had the numbers 14 and 88 very close to each other. And look. I'm not going to speculate on that because as soon as you do, like the someone has won, someone has gotten, someone has gotten over on you. Like, yeah, exactly. Is when when you're trying to yeah. fucking crack the code. Yeah, it's kind of it's like implicating just to notice it. it just feels yeah. bad. Yeah. But leaving that aside, I would just like to bring up the idea of like, why does this guy want the Secret Service protecting him? You think if I was like RFK Jr., I would have. That's true. They got a bad <laughs> track record with the family. Yep. Yeah, like. <laughs> Uh, like Ted Kennedy was their most successful <laughs> presidential <laughs> campaign, you know, like, I, you know, like I would just have private security. I would just be like a secret service. Keep, you can keep it. You're like, we don't we don't need you because like, <laughs> chances are they were probably in on both. <laughs> yeah. Imagine who we could get to like Steven Seagal, probably like every third oh, yeah. MMA guy, yeah. like st the like most intense like high volume Peloton users in all of the United States, like just weird, scary, very thin ladies. I think that's like kind of his base, like of the people that I like knew Babbitt, that were the, the anti-vax. got domed in January yeah, 6th. Right. He, <laughs> like, yes. he needs like a Praetorian guard of Ashley Babbitts and they were like CrossFit ladies. And then yes. And like Steven and, like, Seagal I guarantee you, every it. one of those ladies <laughs> is way more willing to take a bullet for him than any secret service agent. Yeah. God. I mean, the 1488 thing, too, was like, I guess it whatever. You don't necessarily want to talk about it, but it was another one of those things where it was kind of I don't think that he's got a shot. I don't think he'll like hang around the public consciousness for much after the summer, yeah. even really just talk, like, trying just, to find anything to talk about. Yeah, right. Like he's too weird. He's not like a compelling, you know, speaker, even in terms of like, you know, you worry in well, some ways about sure. like. But Holy the cool. idea that like even that he had to do the DeSantis thing where he's like, like calling to the bullpen for a groiper to come in and do a post like that. 
<laughs> like to me, that's like a moment where you can take a deep breath. Where you're like, well, this is what they do like right before they completely crap out. Um, well, as long as we're talking about um, things, things, you know, sort of from the, the paranoid fringes, uh, my other favorite news story over the last couple of weeks, are you guys familiar with the new Obama conspiracy theory? Faintly. Uh, the guy that oh, said that he, he killed that his he personal killed his, chef uh, died. his personal chef just died. His oh, personal I chef you were just talking drowned. about the guy that that came forward and said he he blew Obama back in like nineteen. Oh, that's an old. That's an old. That's an old okay, Obama right. conspiracy theory. We talked about that last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's classic. It's gold. Larry Sinclair. It was Larry he, Sinclair. He, they're just bringing him back. It's this a friend started new... resurfacing the video, and so I was kind of like, oh, is this new? Because he was talking to um, Dinesh. Dinesh yeah. The, yeah, I was yeah. going to say whatever, the 10,000 mules guy. So, oh, yeah, the one that he, that he <laughs> killed his chef, however many mules. He killed his yeah. chef, yeah. He killed his chef. So, I mean, like, this is just uh, like NBC News here. Uh, it says here, um, uh, his name was uh, Tafiri Campbell, 45. He, uh, he drowned um, uh, paddle boarding um, near the um, Barack and Michelle's home in uh, fucking uh, Martha's, Martha's Vineyard. Vineyard. Yeah. Martha's Vineyard. It says, um, Right-wing figures cast doubt without evidence on the police statement and found a home for their views on the website X, the new name for Twitter, after Musk oh. rebranded it Sunday. A post in which Ian Miles Chong, an online pundit, asked followers what they thought really happened, got 5.6 million views on X. A post from the, uh, the account, the Libs of TikTok account, noted that the pond is eight feet deep where Campbell was found and that he had posted swimming videos on Instagram. Facts other people said on the replies indicated that he was killed. The post had more than 14.5 million views. The influential right-wing account Cat Turd 2 with 1.8 million followers said he did not believe anything the government or media said about the death. I won't believe a word of it, Cat, two, Cat Turd 2 wrote. Why would they start telling the truth now? So, once again, like all Obama conspiracy theories, I want to believe. Yeah. I want to believe. So what do we think? And then, like, actually, I saw a funny post the other day where someone like, was listing all the the personal chefs of celebrities who have died or killed themselves <laughs> last year, and I was they know going, too much. Hmm. It's all that. So, what would be the thing that the chef would know that he's like, okay. like seed oils? Like, I don't know. I can't keep this straight. Necessarily. <laughs> I think the what idea we... is that like the big eyes wide shut child orgies. They have oh, to have right. catering, you know. <laughs> so, like, say. they have. It's sort of like how Todd Fields is playing the piano with the with the blindfold. They got yep. the chefs, and of course, they have to be the very best. They got the celebrity chefs back there with the blindfolds, like making canapes while they're doing the child sex. And then, you know, really sometimes easy. they peek and then, oh, you got to kill them. Right. It's tough. You can't because and I think honestly, in a lot of ways, I'm assuming that this is a past hors d'oeuvre scenario. It's not a good idea to have them be blindfolded. <laughs> this is like this is, again, terrible. And this is where I think Obama has really let people down time and again. Like, sure, the concept is fine. but The execution is not there. It's yeah, he just. I mean, his house, honestly, on Martha's Vineyard is another example that if you've seen a, seen that place, it's like, oh, come on. Is it you had is literally it a limited resource? It's just it's blah is what it is. It's, it's just it's might as it's it could be a pottery barn. It's got nothing. It's got no zhuzh. Did anybody I mean, I think, say that the guy was killed because he was vaccinated? Like, did that come together? Did they <laughs> did, like the 5G reception made him too heavy and he drowned in a well, look, pond? <laughs> Look, pa dying while paddleboarding is like uh, that's that's an I drowning while paddleboarding off Martha's Vineyard is like the ideal lib way to die. Yeah, you know, yeah. As far as far as yeah, you go to live Valhalla goes. if that's how you die. Yeah. <laughs> but that being said, if I, if I could just speculate for a, for a moment here, I think one of two things could be possible. One, this was retaliation for preparing Obama's favorite dog stew without the proper ingredients, <laughs> or he was uh, about a, to blow a collie. <laughs> you know this must be called for spaniels we're entertaining <laughs> any idea how stupid we're gonna look in front of the podestas and uh these conceptual I artists that we've invited <laughs> you, you sure bob Iger a mutt <laughs> right. what the fuck you, is wrong with you kill this guy marina abranovich can taste that she knows <laughs> <laughs> and i guess my other easy joke is that he was going to blow the whistle on all of the butcher deliveries to the Obama's Martha's Vineyard estate do come from the local pound. So had to go. He drowned in nearly eight feet of water. But look, you can people drown in the bathtub. You know, you can I drown in a puddle. Eight feet of water. It's like that's, that's taller than a human enough. being. That's <laughs> yeah. way more. Like you can't if you can't swim or you're having trouble swimming. You under eight feet of water, you can't stand and breathe. So right. It's okay. like it's not like they said like a puddle or something. I don't get yeah, how like is, eight also, feet is some sound indictment. 
Yeah, like not to brag, but like I, I could for sure drown in eight feet of water. Like I don't. That's no nothing. Problem. Problem. <laughs> yeah. You think no, Ian Miles? Eight feet of water it? right now. I'll drown in that shit. Yeah, no problem. Up. Yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> I thought when you were saying the Ian Miles Strong thing that it was going to be that he asked his followers where Martha's Vineyard was. <laughs> <laughs> or, or how about this? The Obama personal chef was actually, um, it was transgender, was a, was a trans man having an affair with both Michelle and Barack, who are also trans themselves. And like, you know, was going to blow the whistle on the fact that every prominent figure in politics, media, entertainment are trans. That they are, yeah, that they have been gender flipped at some point in their life. He was going to blow the lid off that. Had to go. I feel like it's early in the news cycle for that. I think you got to give it another week. But I do think everything eventually pivots back to that. Like that's I've seen. I mean, obviously, it's like I haven't seen them from people that are like, check this out. I think you'll believe this too. But there, <laughs> but there was a bunch of that with like with the. This is the only way that like once you get to that level and you can't be normal anymore that that's there's been like some discourse about that with the barbie movie where they're like ryan gosling's a girl margot robbie's a boy i don't know what are you guys talking about like can i be a part of this like it's very important to me that someone listen to what i'm saying which i mean i guess it's like it is kind of darkly funny in its way but that to me feels like the like there's no way to to sort of like you can't clean the parts of a brain that are dirty when it's coming up with thoughts like that. Like you just have to throw it away. Wait, so you're, you're rejecting the science of studying the chin to clavicle ratio of Margot yep. Robbie to just be <laughs> absolutely certain that she was born a man. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people get distracted I, I say, by the did, fact did, that she's <laughs> very obviously an extremely hot woman and they don't notice how wide her shoulders are. You have to really be, you have to take a monastic, approach to like watch like yeah if you're getting Believe caught me, up for instance in a folks, wolf of wall street sort of movie and yeah, you keep thinking wow I, I, it would be amazing to have sex with her that's what they want that's what hollywood wants yep you, to think <laughs> yep. you know like I, I, i've been around a lot of these so-called beautiful female celebrities as soon as i noticed how close their index and middle finger was to each other i was just like nope nope yep. i'm gone the, i hit the ripcord I, I jumped out of my window at the chateau marmont and i was like not today John Goodman pulling the other Lebowski out of the chair at the end of it. Yeah. Like this creep can walk. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the gender investigators because they basically like, I, I think it's just women who are just hating on uh, <laughs> women who are broadly considered very hot. But like yeah. if, if, if the trick here is that every attractive person is actually the other gender, then what's the problem? It works. Who cares? <laughs> like, yeah, it's good it's like, enough. It like, <laughs> It's one of those, I always yeah. wonder, like, what do you like if you're right? What do you, what happens? Yeah, like, what do you do with that knowledge? Like, what do you like? What do you do with that? Just fl just flip the best actor and actress category in the Oscars. Yep, you're taking Hillary Duff to the Hague for having like bigger <laughs> arms. Is that like what do you do? What's the recourse? <laughs> I always love that with uh, the Obunglers, especially because. They'll be like, oh, Obama's gay as hell. He's gay. But then they also will say he's a woman and Michelle is actually a man, which means that they're a straight couple. It's we're back to normal. We're literally yeah. a normal situation. Here. <laughs> yeah. I think this is the this is the thing that I think is always sort of it's not like poignant because the people suck or whatever. But I remember um, reading for a story like a couple of years ago. The story, there's like a big feature about Steve Carlton, the baseball pitcher, after he retired. And he was living in like an earth ship in the desert, the high desert in Arizona. And this Pat Jordan went to talk to him. And like Carlton was a kook when he was a player and then just got crazier and crazier and crazier. And he was so he basically just did the download of every conspiracy theory to Pat Jordan's tape recorder for over the period of like three days. And. Jordan pointed out to him in, you know, like while they were reporting the story, like being like, I don't know how these people like, how are they aliens and Jews at the same time? Because like, wouldn't it have to be <laughs> one or the other? Like, I feel like you have to pick. And the thing is just to believe it, like that Carlton was like, I don't know, man, like, whatever. I'm just saying shit. Like, let me have fun, <laughs> which <laughs> yeah. if they didn't, if they didn't demand a sanction for all of it, I'd be like, yeah, if this is what it takes for you to like uh enjoy news about barack obama i guess you can believe whatever you want to believe <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know like but yeah as long as you're not trying to uh, sue him for it or whatever um i just got one one last story for today i wanted to include this one uh for matt's benefit because it, it is a great demonstration of wisconsin excellence uh matt are you familiar with the gop congressman defends cursing out no good teens at the capitol <laughs> i haven't heard this you familiar yet. with this story no All right, here we go 
Representative Derek Van Orden of Wisconsin didn't get to Congress by being a timid guy. After using campaign funds to travel to the Stop the Steal rally, the Republican was seen in a restricted area on the Capitol grounds on January 6th. After carrying a loaded handgun in his carry-on at the Iowa airport, he ran his successful campaign for the House under probation. In that light, the controversy surrounding him this week shouldn't come as a total surprise. In the wee hours of Thursday morning, a group of teenage Senate pages were resting on the ground in the Capitol Rotunda, which is a regular occurrence where a, when a session goes late. When Van Orden walked by, he went full get off my lawn mode. Wake the fuck up, you little shits, he said, according to one of the pages who spoke to the Hill. What the fuck are you all doing? Get the fuck out of here. You are defiling the space, you pieces of shit. Van Orden asked, who the fuck are you? When a teenager said they were pages, he said, I don't give a fuck who you are. Get out. According to Punchbowl News, which broke the story, Van Orden was drinking in his office prior to berating the teens. A spokesperson for Van Orden said he was hosting one of his regular beer and cheese tours for constituents. That's so Van right. Orden ha yeah. has refused to back down. Speaking with the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, he noted that the Capitol Rotunda served as a field hospital during the Civil War and that threatening a congressman with bad press to excuse poor behavior is a reminder of everything that's wrong in Washington. That's so true. This Did you guy look? I, so I didn't know what Derek Van Orden looked like. Did you look him up? Uh, no, I yeah. Have I'm imagining. Out. So I imagined basically James Sensenbrenner that there's like a level of. Like the the level of Wisconsin that you get to oh, right wow. before you die. He, he is really just, yeah. not a he's not he Sensenbrenner. Like, no, he looks like an evil James Cameron. Like yeah. he's got the <laughs> he, he's bearded, got the fucking bald. like cool glasses. He's got the cool like yep. Ray Ban specs. Well, on. he was a SEAL. He's a, he was a, he's an operator. Oh. He's one of the former operator oh, okay. cool politicians we have to deal nice. with now. Is there an operator? So he's just getting drunk the house? Screaming, Yeah, there, there should be at, at this point there absolutely could be an operator caucus. Nice. People that have canoed somebody whose face yes. appeared on like a trading card now get to mm -hmm. represent. That's <laughs> great. Well, he's going to canoe these fucking pages if they don't stop being around the Capitol. I mean, yeah, also like just this guy, this guy off. literally did January 6th and he's getting mad at some like people who work there being there for their job. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah, like this was a field hospital 170 years ago, which was actually like <laughs> 168 respect. years before I came in here with the little grandma lady holding the American flag and <laughs> like 300 Proud Boys. Embarrassing. That little grandmother is being executed, by the way, because of Donald Trump. Because she believes. What do you him. know about the uh, area that he represents, uh, Matt? Is uh, it so he uh, represents the uh, the. Western Wisconsin, the uh, area, the, like the, the 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 bottom half of the area bordering the Mississippi River, and uh, uh, part of the driftless area, which traditionally had been like a uh, a relatively democratic place, and has sort of drifted right over until very recently. It was uh, represented by Ron Kind, who was like kind of a really big mocker in the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and now, though, this fucking Jamoke is in there, this absolute clown man. So We're that's changing cool. the culture. Absolutely. We got Ron Johnson in the Senate. We got this this guy, real bozo brigade in Wisconsin. I'm sure right people now. just like watching Bobby Knight's greatest freak outs, 10 hour supercut videos on YouTube <laughs> to get psyched up to go to work. <laughs> got to respect that. Uh, shout out the uh, shout out the three lakes vicinity of wisconsin all, all, all my all my new fourth of july friends from three lakes wisconsin all right let's uh let's let's put a pin in it for there for today um reminder once again we'll be in canada in august 17th and 19th toronto and montreal we are coming through tickets available at chapotraphouse.com slash live love to see you there thanks again to david roth for filling in for felix today uh david if people would like more roth in their life where should they go uh to defector.com that's the website i work at and i do a podcast there with drew mcgarry called the distraction but uh yeah if you want to read the stuff defector is it and there's other people there that are better writers than me so you'd enjoy it but and thanks for having me once again though that. show a otani like th this is ridiculous this is this he's is absurd coolest. what he's doing this is like he's this the coolest is baseball player of my lifetime and i wish i had a a cooler angle this is the best that any athlete has ever been at their sport ever they've yeah, done like what do you say there's something i don't even to say about it it's like a cartoon yeah. ridiculous there's fan cams of him like the way that people make them for like k-pop musicians like that is not a thing that happens to baseball players no one's doing that for like jt real muto like he is really <laughs> a level of cool that baseball has never experienced before which i think 
is going to lead to a really annoying backlash against him once he gets on a good team. I think that there's going to be a lot of people that try to sort of mooch a bit of clout by um, talking about how he isn't cool yeah, or whatever. It's not the what being being an ace pitcher and uh, and a top hitter. Well, that's yeah. That's put a ten on that. In this game, it's easy. Yeah, they changed the, the, the pitch double clock. header it's from last pitch. week that was a one game one hit shutout, and then he knocks two home runs in the next game less than an hour later. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. It's too much. It hit 40 home runs by the damn trade deadline. Yeah. Also, it's funny that the angel, like he is doing the thing that Mike Trout had never been able to do, which is make the angels do a real job of trying to make the playoffs. But they had never really committed to that. But at this point, I think they know that there's like, they would actually have angered enough people in the country that people would start noticing them and getting mad. They what might take the that? fucking team away from uh, Artie Marino, all time bozo. Yeah, I love that he like at least he's going to get off there and go to a good team. Thank God he commissioned some guys to like see explore selling the team. And then they presumably were like, it would make you five billion dollars, sir. And he's like, I don't think I'm going to do that. I don't really want to do that. (laughs) I'd rather everyone yell at me all the time. Yep. (laughs) I'd rather be able to text Anthony Rendon anytime, day or night. That's important. (laughs) All right.